Looks really cool. So, just like, maybe a cool one to publish. Pardon? I bet you could publish that one. They're in my book. It's very popular in the illustrations and then the illustrations. Do you know who would know how to start talking to me when the book's going up? Egyptian people. This did it for 40 years. Testing one, two. Okay. So much technology, so much technology. <laughs> okay. Zane uh, getting on voting. It's difficult sometimes. So, uh, I don't know if there's anybody joining us live, but uh, if not, it'll record and you guys can watch it later. So today I want to talk a little bit about some of those uh, kind of the fundamental things that I think that if you can get these items down, you are going to be so much more advanced. It's going to help you really be able to, to really start talking the language right away. So I'm going to view them down. We're going to see if you guys can help me fill in the blanks. So, let me find my pen. Oh. Who, what, when, where, why? I always tell people if you can get these down, and then so when you first hear, you know, meet PJ Asia, you know, Mekanesia E. As soon as you hear that, you know that it's what, or you know that it's where, meet PJ. It's going to help your comprehension so much better because then you can kind of focus in on, okay, what was the verb? And that's where knowing your endings helps too. So, what is who? Wenija. Wenija. Yeah. You might say like Wenija Okwe. Who is that woman? Wenija O Kwezi. Who is that old man? Wenija O um Kwe or Gigiagos. Who is that little girl? You know? So Wenija. What about when? Close. It's the other one. <laughs> Egypt. Those two are honestly the most flipped. I, I, Consistently, I mean, it's really common for people to flip those two. So, need you be. And, you know, they are really close. So, since we did that one, let's do the, uh, the where. So, where is the P jump? Need you be when? Need be you where? And, like I said, those are so close that sometimes they're a little bit hard to, uh, to get them right. They're really, they're really common to flip these two. Not that I'm telling you you should try to, but it happens. So, when need you, need you be, when, need you, does anybody remember why? Need you, need you be. What about how much or how many? Close. Need you add some? Yeah, so, yeah, need you add some. Uh, yeah, so. And sometimes you'll also hear Nija Ed, so there's another way sometimes you will say a Nija Ed, so variation. But what you said was correct back there is you said that you just, yeah, it's funny because we did that same thing when we were working. It's you said the Nija, which is how or what. So when you say how many, it's easy to be like, oh, how? Nija. So Nija is how or what. Um, so it just kind of depends. It can be used as both. So it can be used. For how or for what? What about which? Does anybody remember which? Nietzsche, yeah. That one's not as common, but you, know, you still want to have it in your, uh, your garrison, if you will. Nietzsche, yeah. And then finally, what? It, you're right. Wait, Nietzsche. The other one, though. Wet Nietzsche. Eh, you were correct. That is what? For the other one, we already got that one up there. Wet Nietzsche. So I was like, eh. So, when need you, when need you, when need you, who, when need you, need you pee, need you pee, when need you pee. And one variation you sometimes hear with need you pee is you sometimes hear need you pee, <clears throat> need you pee or need you pee. Need pee you, need pee you, where, need pee you, need you we, need you we, need you we, why, need you so or Nija etso, there's another variation of that, but Nija etso, how much or how many? That one you hear a lot, like with time, Nija etso de Bugnac, or age, I and mean, you ask me how old they are. You know, I guess if you're buying something, you probably want to know that, like how much is it, you know? 
No one says, ah, oh, those must be damn, yeah, it's too expensive. Man. There's nothing funner, <clears throat> I will just simply say, is if you can get someone else that can pick up a little bit of language, even if it's a friend of yours and you can learn a couple words like uh, mescade, expensive, or zom muscade, too expensive, or wind pungade, it's cheap, and then go garage sailing. <laughs> there's nothing funner than that because you, know, you can sit there and you can talk about the item right in front of people, and there's probably a 99.9% chance they have no idea what you're talking about. If they do, that would be pretty fancy too. But you can just be like, oh, that's too expensive. That's, too, that's a good deal. That's cheap. You know? Now, it's a mescarite sound. <laughs> Nija, Nija, again, how or what? Nija. Nija, yeah. Nija, yeah. Which? So, like, which pair of shoes or which hat? Nija, yeah. Nija, yeah. Ni real quantum. Wek, Nija. Wek, Nija. What? <clears throat> Like I said, you guys can, if you can get these ones down, even make yourself some note cards or um, drill them, just really drill them. I mean, try to get these down because it will help out immensely. Oh boy, here we go. <clears throat> here we go. The independent and the conjunct, the two main forms that you see these verbs in. Okay, the first verb I have up here, being chigay. Does anybody know what that is? Clean. Clean, okay. And make you work, work. work. Hey, we're halfway home. We know the verbs. That's good. Now, how would I say I work? The being you get. How could I say I did work? The gee being you get. I hear you. Gee being you get. I did work. How could you say I'm going to work? Now, don't worry. You don't have to write these down. You want these ones? You probably have written down a ton. So if you want to just listen to these, you'll probably be good. Because I guarantee you've got these. If you have a thick notebook like you claimed over there, sir, I guarantee you have them in there at least four times, maybe five. So, Nagi Bean Chige, I did work. What about I'm going, or not work, I did clean, Nagi Bean Chige. What about I'm going to clean? Nui. Chige, uh-huh. Nui Bean Chige. What about you clean? Not talents, but just like you clean, you clean. Gabin Chige, I heard that. Gabin Chige. You. What about he or she cleans? Just being Chige. Just being Chige. Yeah. I mean, some people will sometimes put a little W on there too. We'll be in Chige or being Chige. What about we but not you? My favorite type of cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> I hope my wife's not listening. Nabin Chige. Men. Uh, we're cleaning but not you. Okay, that's good. Nabin <laughs> Chige. Men. What about we are all cleaning? We are all cleaning. Yeah. And Lori, I can't hear you if you were saying them. I think I said your voice, but I don't know if you were trying to say them, but there you go. You're being chicken. Mm -hmm. But it's okay to just say them as well. You don't have to. And if you if you're you know if you get a little intimidated with them, you can always say them in your head or whatever, but realize that we're in a in a, in a happy place. It's a comfortable place. Is your relatives. Nobody's going to mock you too much. He might, but watch out. <laughs> but, but, you know, most of us will have a good time or an enjoyable place. So, okay, what about you all clean? Gabin Chigam, good. So, G and then M, Gabin Chigam. And they clean. Gabin Chigam, yeah. Good, good. So, and then the same thing with this. If we wanted to say you did clean, what would, we, what would we say? So if Gabi and Chige would say, Gagi, you're thinking, yeah, gonna. Yeah, right, right. Yes, Gagi, being Chige, you did clean. And then if we're going to say, you're going to clean, we, eh, eh, Gui, being Chige. And then just being Chige by itself, he or she cleans. How would we say he or she did clean? You being chige? Uh -huh. okay. How we say, did that man clean? <laughs> did that man clean? Yeah, yeah. Be, oh, yeah. Did that man clean? First the lion. Kenoshquet. Lion. So good. Okay, so we clean, but not you. So uh, and then you, we all clean, you won't put those. Fast and future, but being chigaman, we all clean. 
the beach again, you all cleaned, the beach again, they clean. So pretty good. But if you can get this pattern down right here, I mean, this is what the majority of our basic BAI verbs fall into. Um, fancy term for animate intransitive. So, but I'm telling you right now, if you can get these seven down and this other stuff I'm talking about, you are really going to be on your way to be able to say all kinds of things in the language. Okay, on the other side, what is this conjunct for? What do we use it for? <clears throat> to confuse us. That's an excellent answer. <laughs> to confuse us. Ah, quick maybe. It's I don't the know. second verb in a sentence. <laughs> second verb. Or more. Mm -hmm. so you're telling stories or prayers, mm -hmm. answering questions. Questions. Yes or no. Big questions is another good one. Yeah. So when we're asking those who, what, when, where, why questions, those are the words we talked about first, that when need you, need you, need you, so when need you, those big who, what, when, where's, the verb is going to be in this form over here. Okay? This form would be used if you're going to ask a simple question or just make a statement. So, for example, if you want to say, did you clean yesterday? Do we beam to get me wa book? Or I could have said, wa book me, do we beam to get our room though? So that's why, that's why we're going this way. So, do we beam to get me wa book? Are you going to clean tomorrow? But if you want to say, did you clean yesterday? Do we beam to get me? Yeah, look at you beat me in the pen. <laughs> That's good. Uh -huh. So you keep being again that now go. Did you clean yesterday? So again, just getting this stuff down. Now to the conjunct and beyond. All the information on the conjunct stop type is on the end of the verb. It's all back here. Nothing's up here. The only thing up here will be like your past or your future markers. But all that information is contained right back here. So what does I work? Make chui yan. What about you work? Make chui yan. He or she works. Make chui. What about we work but not you? Another good one. Make chui yan. Unless you're just like, unless you're one job, you're not trying to work. Okay, make chui. How about we all work? Make chui go. Make You all work. Make chewy yuck. What about they work? Eh, make chewy walk. Good. Good. Eh, eh, good. What? Man, you guys make this teaching thing easy. Make chewy yuck, make chewy yin, make chewy eat, make chewy yuck, make chewy go, make chewy yuck, and make chewy what? Okay. And if we were to change verbs and use being together, all you do is you just put a different verb in there. So it'd be bean chigayan, bean chigayan, bean chiget, bean chigayak, bean chigayako, bean chigayak, bean chigayawat. Easy peasy. <clears throat> and again, I mean, you learn, if you learn these patterns, then you can take like a gazillion verbs and just punch them into this pattern. These AI verbs. Now there are, like we, we did have a class yesterday. Which we're like, well, I showed a few of the irregular ones. So yes, there are in fact ones that don't operate this way, but there's a ton of them that operate this way. So and if you get this pattern down, then figuring the other parts is going to be simpler. So that's good. Good. One net, one net. How about you guys online? Do we have any questions? Let me see if I'm always bad about checking for questions. I apologize. If you have questions, just shout. Just shout out at me because I'm really bad about going up there and pushing it so I can see if there's a question. Okay. One more kind of major thing that you want to get down are called demonstratives, not demonstratives, but demonstratives. That's like this, that, those. In Potawatomi, it does matter if they're animate or inanimate. Okay, what is animacy? Life, that's a good word, kind of life. Or things that are spiritual. spiritual. Yeah. And occasionally there's things that you're just like, I don't know why they're animate, they just are. There's certain objects you just have to uh, learn that they're animate, like kind of figure them out. Foods are kind of complicated because there's some foods that make perfect sense to me, and others I'm just kind of like, huh, maybe, okay. 
Maybe it's because of the importance of it, like corn is animate. You can see that's kind of a staple crop, kind of a very important crop for us. It also literally means that miraculous seed. Um, that's that word down then. But cojes beans or cojesta, rural beans. I heard them say cojes, because like, who eats just one bean? It's like blueberries. Who eats just one blueberry? Come on. It's like me, men, and stuff. Anyway, though, uh, cojesta beans are animate, but then uh, blueberries are animate. But blueberries are a pretty important uh, plant. So some of them are a little hard. But again, some of them are easy to figure out because, like, pen, potato is animate. I get that one 100%. You take a bag of potatoes, you stick it in your, in your closet with minimal light, you come back and you got like a tree in there. <laughs> Perhaps not all of you have experienced this situation, but <laughs> those of us that have a tendency to put their potatoes in odd locations and forget about them, yeah, you can actually start growing them in there. <laughs> wow. Well, okay, so now that we've, we've got these up here, so one other thing you have to keep in mind with this is there's the singular form and there's the plurals. And you also have to worry about how close in proximity something is to you that will change these words. Now, I will say that there's probably four of these that get used the most. And then the others, just kind of here and there. I mean, I mean you still want to know them just in case you want to use them, but they don't get used maybe as much. So this, that's going to be something that's close, that's and that's something like I could reach out. Like I could reach out and touch Pamela, somebody that's close to me. Which one is that? Oh, yeah. Oda, good. And this is the only one that's the same on the other side. Oda. So that's convenient. So it's the same for inanimate. So person or table, it's both Oda. After that, they're different. So how? Uh, you want to see this? This like that person. Okay, that person. My English is a little funky. I think I should have it like that. Like when is your O? Who is that? So it's O. I gave it away. <laughs> oh, that person. What about that person way off in the distance? Ago, ago. So far off, ago. So Oda, Oda, O, ago. And in this case, uh, Zara, who's the furthest sitting right now, she'd be like, I'll go, like, she's the furthest point. I didn't mean to call you out while you were munching. She's like, as she took a bite, she was like, well, okay. Hey, at least I didn't turn the camera around. So that would have messed up. <laughs> I'll fall judge for that. But anyway, though, it's I'll go would be the furthest away from you. And it's all in, it's all in uh, your mind as the, as the one speaking. I mean, like right now, I can see somebody walking back there into the museum. That would be I'll go. It would be like the furthest, that person way over there. And that's kind of how it is outdoors. If you're outdoors, it's probably somebody that's just kind of way off in the distance, maybe from you, maybe far as you can see, kind of like Ago. So, Oda, O, Ago. Of these three, this one gets used the most because it's kind of like the in between. You're not within reach, but you're not a zillion miles away. So, you're in the in between zone, somewhere right in between. So, that one gets used a lot. O. Now, for the plural, it's what is the for these like these people? You're close. That's the other one. Goda. Goda and eh, Goda. And since you mentioned that one, we'll throw that one over. There. So Goda, these people. She she said Noda. That is the other one on the other side. We get in that. So Goda. Goda Bamazajuk. These people. Goda Bamazajuk. Gi Bamazajuk. Those people. Egi Bamazajuk. Those people way back there. So it's Goda. I don't know why I'm telling you. I'm just <laughs> so much for so much for asking you. I start just giving away. Goda gi egi. So on the now, so this is the animate side. So it's Oda. Again, something you can kind of somebody you can reach out and touch. O, that person or living being that's a little further away. And then Ago, that person that's way off in the distance. And then the plural, Goda, you know, these people that you can reach out and touch that right next to you. Gi, these people that are a little further away, and then Egi, those people way off in the distance. We've got this one started. <clears throat> so we got Oda, what's the, what is that? What is with inanimate, that? E, good. What about far off? Egi. Egi, yeah. So Oda, E, Egi. Oh, that was from my mom. Noda, uh -huh. and then knee, and 
Any. Any. Yeah. So that kind of follows a little bit of a pattern. I mean, they're kind of the end ones. No to me, any. Go to gi, eggy. At least with those two. And that's the demonstrators. Now, when you're talking or when you're telling stories or making sentences, you're going to use these a lot. I mean, you're going to use them usually right in front of a noun. You might say like that table or that person. So you're going to use the O, the E, the G, and the D quite a bit. The others, it just kind of depends how you like to talk. I mean, you can you can definitely use the Oda quite a bit, the Oda and Oda, just depending. Um, and again, the other ones, you want to know them just in case you want to reference somebody further off, but I mean, you're not going to necessarily be doing that as much. So if you only have, if you only have the memory for four of these, these are the four to kind of just hunker down on, or maybe you want to just start somewhere like, okay, I'll get those four down, then I'll be good. Okay, this is comes to the fun part. Does everybody have a piece of paper? Mm -hmm. good. Well, if not, I'll try, I could rustle some up somewhere. Or if you just want to listen, that's okay too. So this is what I'm going to do now. <clears throat> I just I was sitting in my office about ten minutes ago. I wrote some sentences down. I didn't I didn't put a lot of thought into it. I apologize, but I just wrote some sentences down. Just whatever kind of popped up in my head. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to do a little listening activity. I'm just going to say the sentence. I'm going to say it about ten times. Let you guys write them down and see kind of what you guys get. But I do have quite a few, so this time what I'm going to do is I'll probably do about five of them, and then and then we'll talk about them, and then go back. So here we go. Just listen, just get your ears open and see what we got. Nipija Ejiayan. 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 We write both priority and order. Uh, if you want, or you can just write what it means. Whichever you want. You either write what it means or you can be. Yeah, I mean, back when death and Ed went into whatever you'd like to do is fine. Nipija Ejiayan. Because I'm also going to give you some answers for these two this time. So Nipija Ejiayan. Okay. Next one, we'll go. So we're gonna do five down, and then we're gonna. I'm gonna stop, translate them for you, so you check yourself, and then I'm gonna give you some example answers, or let you guys make some answers. I'm fine with that too. Okay, number niche, number two. Nipija gajiat o gigiagos. Nipija gajiat o gigiagos. Nipija gajiat o gigiagos. Okay. That may not have been ten times, but it's a few. You want one more? Okay, one more. Ni pija gajiat o gigiagos. Okay. This next one's shorter, so you don't have to use as much ink or strain as many muscles in your hand or whatever. Gabak damne. 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 Okay. Now we're going to do number four, and then, like I said, we'll circle back and we'll answer these and uh, come up with some answers for them. <clears throat> Copy can o nane. 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 
And hopefully, even if you didn't get any of them right, maybe they sound familiar. That's a start. I mean, it's it's a different skill listening and then trying to reply or trying to comprehend what you're hearing than it is reading or even 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 just reading off a list. It's a different skill. So you need your not goal. Okay. <clears throat> Number one, does anybody want to share what they what they think that was? Where are you going? Where are you going? Yeah. So they what it was was knee p yen. So where are you going? Ni p yen. This is a very good sentence. I mean, I could see using that in a variety of everyday situations. Yeah, ni p yen. You know, where are you going? Ni p yen. Okay, so let's come up with some some answers here. Hmm. How about uh, I'm going to town? Anybody know how to say that? Okay, Odon, and we'll say Odon next to town. I'm gonna go. So we'll say I'm gonna go, or, or we can say right now. So Nede Gia. That can't spell. So. I'm going to town. Odonic to town. Odon is just town. That ek means to it. So Odonic Nidigia. I'm going to town. With Gia, we use this longer form. I know it's a little different, but Nidigia. So Odonic Nidigia. I'm going to town. <clears throat> what if uh, let's see, what if we want to say anybody else want to try? What if you say what if you want to say I'm going to work? Maybe you have maybe this is in the future. Like, I'm gonna go to work at noon. I'm gonna go to work at noon. Let's think attached to that. Wow, it's magnetic. I'm going to work at noon. Where are you going? I'm going to work at noon. You're probably like, why are you leaving now? <laughs> okay, I'm going to work. Uh, let's let's forget noon. I'm gonna say let's just say I'm going to work. Let's keep it simple. I'm going to work. You are you are on the perfect track right there. Let's let's go ahead and run what you said right there. So you said Nadejia. You started to use your meek chewing. Mm -hmm. The only thing here I would change is I just uh, say uh gungo, like the location where I work. So Nadejia, Meek Chui, Gungok. Now, <clears throat> one thing that we always have to kind of catch ourselves on, we always gotta kind of watch is um, Sometimes, you know, when we think things out, a lot of times, we, uh, most of us are first language speakers English, sometimes we think it literally out in English. Sometimes it's, it sounds a better if you kind of flip it over this way. So bring your meek chewy gum book. So like to work, I'm going. Meek chewy gum book, nadejia, I'm going to work. Meek chewy gum book, nadejia. And this, this gum book at the end, that means to a location. Some, a lot of times you'll see like a gamak on the end of something. That just means like a location, and then the gum gok is like to that location. So, and the verb mikchui changes into a noun that way. So, mikchui gum gok nadejia. And I will say there are a bunch of ways that you can say it a lot of times the same sentence. So, you know, she, we also could have said nadejia ewi mikchui. I'm going to the night of work, going to work, you know. And there's some other ways you can come up with how to say, you know, almost a very similar thing. And because word order is not as important, or really not important at all in Guatemala for the most part, it works doing it this way, and it works doing it the other way. And if there were other words we could do it other ways, we could mix it up and do it like five different ways, and every single one of them would be understandable. You know, 
sometimes it's hard to, I mean, usually what I say to people or to students is kind of uh, whatever you want to emphasize, maybe set that out front. So the question was, where are you going? So to me, the location of where I'm going is most important. So I'll set the location out there and then I'll say I'm going there. Now, if this question was changed, maybe it was, you know, why are you going? Well, now maybe it's, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you said I'm sad. Or maybe being sad is more important, so you put that out front. Yeah. So you can change it based on kind of what's important or what you're trying to emphasize. Okay, that's good. Uh, how about, uh, how about I'm going to the lake? Or how about we're going to the lake, but not you? <laughs> how about we tell them they're not, they're not coming with us? We're going to the lake, but not you. I know the word for lake. And bus? Mm -hmm. Sounds just like a bus, like a school bus. A bus? So to the lake, we would just say bus back. So to the lake, we're going to go, but not you. So we're going to use that verb gia again. And gia will use the longer. Form, so it's going to have a nadejia men. Yeah, that scan out. There we go. Besak nadejia men. Besak nadejia men. We're going to the lake, but not you. Now, <laughs> so this would be you talking to that person. Like they're asking you because they just asked you, hey, the Pijaja. They obviously don't know where you're going because they're asking. So they, they already knew they weren't coming, bro. Hey, we're going to the lake. Oh, okay. I'd like to go. We're going to like, sorry. But I always like to joke around about that because in English, it's it's one of those languages that are very uh, up for interpretation a lot of times. A lot of times it has to do with the tone that you talk. Sometimes it requires some hand motions to get your emphasis across. Because in English, if I say it in a real monotone type way, like, hey, we're going to the lake. Or we're just going to, school, we're going to the lake. You might be like, oh, okay, we are cool. You might, no, 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 no. Shit. We're going to the lake, not you, buddy. You don't have room in the car or whatever. But a lot of people are very direct, so you already know whether you're where you ride. You're either coming or going, or not coming. You know. So, basuk nadejiam. Good, good. Okay, so that second sentence that we had, nipijagajat o gigyagos. Nipijagajat o gigyagos. Where did those girls go? Close, almost. Little girls. That's right, too. So where did you're all? You're both. You're both like right there. Where are you going from? You're, no, no. <laughs> no, but that's okay. That's okay. I like it. They're all out there. So so nipija gajiat o gigia gos. So there's just one girl. Where did she go? That girl. That's that's what you were that's what I mean by being really up. close. Yeah. And then so yeah. So so what it was was deep page where Gajia O Gigiagos. So deep page Gajia, where did she go? That little girl Gigiagos. Gigiago by itself is just is a little girl, but now you're really saying like that little, little girl, teeny weeny, like I like a two or three year old maybe if you're talking about like you really want to point out she's a little, that, that little girl. This might be something a parent might say, They're like ah, where's my kid go? You know where'd she go? Nipi jagajat o gigiago. Where'd that little girl go? Scan ah, nipi jagajat o gigiago. Hopefully my third baby. Okay, so there's some things. What if we said that? Uh, she went to school. Does anybody know where for school? I don't know if we. I'll tell you what. Bam. Bam. Don't get my. Now, now to top it up though, let's let's see if we can put it on the in the two form. So it's going to it's going to go. Look at that. What? Yeah. That's good when it starts coming out like this. Good. It's going to go. So to the school. Um, how do we say she went? Ogizia. Say that one more time. Ogizia, she did go. Pretty good, Ogizia. 
you do it like that, or Gijia, or you can just say, or you can just say Gijia, like that. Either way. So she went to school. Okay. That little girl. So you can leave it like that, or you can say, oh, Gijia, that little girl went to school. Skongamguk Gijia, oh, Gijia, or Skongamguk Gijia, oh, Gijia, that little girl went to school. That's good. Good job. It's good when you pull it out of the mind like that. Okay, so let's, what do we want to say? Um, she went to the store. She went to the store. Say it again. Da welcome gook. Da welcome gook. I have a deep shit. A little bit deaf sometimes. <clears throat> But like I said, if you ask my wife, it's selective. Oh, wow. Dow. 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 What about what if we said um, ooh, what if we said she went to the bathroom? Does anybody know the word for bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm really challenging you guys today because I haven't really went over some of these words. Okay. Easy algamuk. That works. Eh? Easy algamuk. And there's a couple ways to say bathroom. So I was interested to see what I get. Easy algamuk. Easy algamuk. So she. She went to the uh, literally the crapper, <laughs> the place where we poop the mizi gum. So there's you can say it that way. You can also say zak mal gum book, and that's for uh, that's another way to say like uh, like restroom. You can all there's a couple ways you can say it, but uh, this will also work if you're talking about like the outhouse there, kind of like the crapper <laughs> in the bathroom. But again, in English it sounds silly when you say that out loud. You're like oh. But the bottom line, it's not like that. It's not it's not offensive. Again, we're very direct. It's not like you don't have to beat around the bush like, oh, they went to the bathroom, went to a number two, whatever. <laughs> Not a big deal. It's just part of nature, part of life. Uh, in English, we think, oh, he, he said poop or he said go to the bathroom. We start laughing. It's a big joke. But it's just part of like I said. So the word here, measy, means literally to do a number two. But I will say, knowing those type of words is great if you're like, if you don't want to say that in public and you have kids or grandkids, you're like, oh, they're just like, oh, I got to go to the bathroom. Man. Mizi and Ake Shishi again. Mizi or Shishi. It's nice to be able to say that instead of being like Mizi o Gungok. So to the restroom. Gijia o Gigagos. Good. Excellent. One net. One net Shana. Yes, you're doing good. Okay. So the next one we got. <clears throat> this one's a little shorter, I hope. I should ask y'all. What was the next one? Okay, the buck and the buck and the And what was it? Are you all hungry? Yeah, the buck and I started, yeah. The difference there would be like if it was just good buck. That's are you hungry? Good buck and are y'all hungry? Are you you all? Good luck down there. Y'all hungry? No. Joe? Okay. Well, what do we want to say? So let's say that. Let's say no. So no, I'm not. We're not hungry. And you're talking to somebody else because they asked the question. So you're probably going to say, we're not, but not you. So Joe, Joe, let's see. And this one's, this one, this one, the uh, bucktail, a lot of times it sounds more like him. Right here, but you can do it with an in or an in. So, chombakte si men, chombakte si men. We're not hungry. Chombakte si men. So, with Padwami, with a negative statement, you got two things going for you, which is really helpful for those of us that don't hear real great. You can either catch the cho at the front, which means no, or you might catch the c that's also part of that negation. No, it doesn't mean it's a double negative. It's just it's just a negative statement has both those items in it. The exception might be as if somebody said, like, no, 
but it's going to rain. But then, then you're almost making two states. You might say, no, it's going to rain. semen. No, we're not hungry. semen. Or maybe you want to say, We're starving. We're starving. E, but not you. <laughs> We're starving. We are starving. We're starving. We are starving. We're starving. We are starving. Or we can just be like, yeah, we're hungry. So if we just say we're hungry, it's almost the same as this answer up here, just like buck. We're hungry. Buck damn it. Buck damn it. Or buck damn it. Okay. And I think I did maybe trick some of you guys, but a lot of times I, I would have probably done the you. Are you hungry? And I thought I could do the you all. So you might not have, you might have heard it, thought, okay. He said, Are you hungry? Bam, I got that. But then I just put a little little, little curveball in there by throwing that M in there. You can buck the damn thing. Are y'all hungry? One thing I also want to mention about uh, simple questions like this in Potawatomi, <clears throat> and this is something that even myself sometimes I have to fight the urge to do. Because in English, we have a tendency to come up on questions like, hey, are you going? And it's like, do you want to do that? And it's like you come up on them. In Potawatomi, you either want to keep basically a straight across or even drop a little bit. So like, and I have to even fight this tense in myself sometimes. Just either try to keep that, that, that question either straight across or drop it a little bit. Because in English, we go the opposite. We go like, where are you going? What are you doing? <laughs> and so, one of those things that sometimes if you're a first language speaker of English, it'll kind of mess with you sometimes and you won't think, you won't, you won't think about it. The same way you almost got to const constantly kind of keep yourself in mind about putting those uh, most important things out front. Because you have a you're going to have a natural tendency to want to say, you know, I went to the store yesterday. Because that's what, you know, when we look versus like yesterday, I went to the store or store, I did go yesterday. It's just that. It's just the way it works. That or it's going to mess your English up really good. That'll happen too. Like you can't remember how to say things in English. <laughs> That's kind of a bonus there. Um, occasionally you get to that point where you're like, you can't remember a word in English, but you remember how to describe it. That's a real funky place to be like when you're like, can you, you know, take the dishes out of that thing that washes the dishes, the dishwasher? You know, like you're like, <laughs> you can't think of the word for dishwasher. It's something like, oh. Because all of our words are very descriptive in nature. They kind of describe exactly what the object does. And so I might get there. I might be stuck there one day. Okay. Okay, our, our third one we have. So we had or our fourth one, I'm sorry. Copy cane or What was that one? Copy. And that man was can you say a letter? Does he that man make copy? Yeah, did that man make coffee? Is that man making coffee? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so copy. That would be he or she is making coffee. Copy can or So is that man making coffee? So like right now. Copy can or none. Copy can or none. Is that man making coffee? Now, this here is kind of an interesting thing, this KE. It's a very useful tool, particularly if you can't think of a verb or something sometimes, because you can attach this to a noun a lot of times to create a verb. So, for example, copy is how we say coffee, because we don't have the letter F, we say copy. You know, it's just it's kind of a potawatomized word for coffee. And there's a couple other words people will use for coffee, like black medicine liquid and 
some other longer ones, but you know, I always heard copy and I always thought that eh, copy works for me. So, uh, but anyway, copy K. If you add this KE to a noun, you could say like either working or doing something with that thing. Okay. So, like for example, let's say you like to make tables. I don't like to really make anything, but let's say you like to make tables, not very crafty, but let's say you're a table, I don't know, a table smith, a table maker. I don't know. So you make tables. You can say dope when K. He or she makes or works with tables. If you wanted, if you were talking about a mechanic, you could say Dabian K. He or she works on or does something with a car. Now, this could even be somebody maybe who builds cars. Maybe you're talking about somebody like an afford car. I mean, it could mean that too. But it has, but you could do that. You can create a word specifically for something. <clears throat> and so, like for example, let's say there was a word, there was a specific word for fishing. In fact, that's one I know of for a fact that people do use this. Okay, there's guetamochka, but maybe you can't think of guetamochka. Excellent. Maybe it's a little too long and you just can't think of it. Maybe you instead you say gigo okay. Well, guess what? <clears throat> I've heard people say gigo okay. <laughs> so I know for a fact that that works. So you can just be like gigo okay. You're doing something with fish. Fishing. So maybe you just can't remember guetamochka and you say gigo okay. There you go. <clears throat> the word that, that we use for April is zis bak to ke. Jesus. This pacto que Jesus. This pacto is like this pacto is like sugar or maple syrup making month or moon. So it's the moon that you make maple syrup. This pacto que Jesus. <clears throat> so anyway, I just want to throw that in there. It's it's a useful tool to, to kind of remember. And uh, man, sometimes I just. I just look at these words just now. I was thinking all the deeper meanings of some of these words, and I'm like, oh, man, you gotta stop that. Sometimes you just can't help yourself, but I'm gonna do it for just a split second. A lot of these words, you know, they have literal meanings. Like you can break them down. Like dope o is the verb to place food on something. I like to joke with people sometimes, like, hey, if you don't actually eat on your kitchen table, is it really a dope one? Because <laughs> it literally is talking about that that thing that you eat on that dope one. So maybe for you, your table is just gonna be. But a bunch of junk, a bunch of junk drawer, you know, and you eat the kid, you eat in the living room or something, you know, dope when Dabian, you know, it used to be used for wagon, but before that it was used for those traverses, those uh, those deals that used to have a traverse, or I'm not saying it wrong, travel away, meet wedge. I knew it was something like that. Travel away, a traverse. <laughs> but you're traversing somewhere with your travoy, maybe. <laughs> It's that little thing that you would hook on the back of like a horse or even dogs before we had horses. It's kind of like, like and you kind of put your belongings and you would drag them. And that's actually what it's literally talking about, dragging things. Uh, but then later it became used for wagon and now it's used for car. Or maybe one day when we stop using cars and we just have our spaceships, maybe we can just get <laughs> some Dobby on there. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Dobby on. What would a coffee be? What would be Dobby? You can do that. You can say copy dopamine. Just do like that. Copy dopamine. Or if you want to take it, you want to make it a smaller variation of this. Because I mean, a table's kind of big. I mean, you can't make this. You could say, was is a small table. So you could say, copy was small coffee table. Yeah, you can throw that on there. Exactly. I mean, you can you can describe anything around you and be real specific about it. Uh, so anyway, I got off chart for a second. I apologize. Probably not the first time. Well, it was not the first time, but the last time. Okay. I like hearing all the history and stuff. It's great to hear the meaning behind the word. Tell me what you know. I find it interesting. It's just one of those things that I appreciate this group here because you guys are have had a little bit of language experience. With beginner students, this is kind of a dangerous place to tread sometimes because sometimes you, you get to that point where they stop hearing the word for what it is. They're like, okay, what is it? It's that thing that I said, you know, instead of just hearing dope one and saying, okay, it's a table. 
They're like, oh, that thing that you place food on. Instead of hearing gift of one chair, they're like, okay, it's that thing that you sit on. And it can kind of, you know, it can be, it can be, it can confuse some people. But in the end, I think the, the deeper like kind of historical knowledge is all kind of inside of our words, it's in our language. I mean, even a word like Gmon, you know, I'm going again, is a canoe. Gmon, Gma means to kiss, to kiss someone. Gma, Gma is a canoe. Well, it's like I was. It was explained to me. It's like you're kissing the water, like with your paddle and you're paddling. You're like, because if you were coming into an area, you definitely don't want to be making a bunch of racket or every every person, every enemy combatant or other person that you don't know is going to hear you coming from a mile away, and you might just get an arrow right there, you know, or whatever, get attacked. So it's like, so it's like it's kissing the water. But a lot of our words have deeper meanings. And uh, it's interesting because like in English, uh, I always find that I, I can't really do that kind of stuff with English, even though it's technically my first language. And a lot of that's because English borrows from so many different places. Like it borrows from native language, it borrows from French, it borrows from Spanish, it borrows from here, it borrows from there. Because it's such an amalgamation of just different things. And I'm not saying it's not completely possible. Maybe I'm just not a wordsmith with English, but you know, it's a little bit more challenging sometimes to know the deeper meaning. Our language, think about this, is all from a source. It doesn't have a lot of like, yeah, there's an occasional maybe one or two words here or there that are borrowed, but the majority of it is it's from one source. So it doesn't have that kind of interesting way of looking at it. Okay. Fifth one here, I apologize for taking so long to get to this fifth one. Ni, uh, what was the fifth one? Nijanan. Nijanan. What is that? How are you today? How are you today? Yeah. I was hoping that would be one. There we go. Nijanan. Today. Now, obviously, there's a lot of ways you can ask how somebody is. You can just say Nijanan. Nijanan. Gong. You can say Nijanan. Ging. How are you? Nijanan. Ging. Wa. How are y'all? Yous. You can say, Nija Ej Bamazian, how are you living? That's a common way to say the same thing. You say, Nija Ej Bamazian, how are you living? Uh, you can even be like, Nija Ej Weba, what's happening? Nija Ej Weba, Nija Ej Webzian, what's happening with you? Nija Ej Webzian. What's happening with you? Yeah. All of those work. So, but how are you today? Gosh, I'll be thinking for a second. Oh, maybe not. So, what are some good answers? Just normal answers. Ijan, that's a good one. Get my set on way of my Okay. Hold on here. Ijan what? Okay, yeah, Mina Kadum. It's Magus Set on Wet at Matian. Magus. Get the Magus. Get the Magus. Oh, shoot. It's hard for me to remember unless I say it. Is your wet or Set on Wet? Set on Wet, okay. Still born, but a woman. Get the magus on way, or has it kind of like still born, but Get the magus is born, but Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> and sometimes I'll say like uh, I like to say like oh, I'm still alive, megwa, that the magus still living, it's still alive. Still cast the shadow. Still cast the shadow. You can say no modest. I'm living well. No modest. Living well. I like that one, right? It's a good one. I'm a dope modest. Living well. And of course, if you're not doing well, there's a thousand things you could say there too. You could say, like, you could say like, Doc, phone guy. Sick. You could say, uh, Deep, deep ah. Got allergies. <laughs> you say, my nose is clogged up. You say, silly, my stomach ache. 
or your door, any hundreds of things you can say to that. So it's good. Yeah. And uh, one thing I would say here is <clears throat> it's the same. I would say the same thing with like saying uh, like see you later or until another time. You know, change it up every once in a while. Don't don't get stuck into a pattern where you're always like on my shishna or isha anma or nemanoma. So that's the one you always use. Change it up a little bit. Yeah, do a little. We get to magisha or do a uh, you know megwa that is still alive or do a you know just dakno. Hopefully not. I'm in that class. Don't be being dakno. <laughs> Don't be sick. <laughs> but you know just I didn't look at English. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Sometimes I just look up there and think, oh, okay, I don't know myself anymore. Which is actually this one you hear a lot of in prayers. You're like, if somebody's praying, like, you know, we're poor and pitiful. And a lot of times, poor and pitiful is not exactly what English people think of as poor and pitiful. Because Padawami, you know, traditional way of thinking is not the same. A lot of times, you know, we gave what we had to one another, we took care of each other. A lot of times, your leaders in a village might be the guy who's giving away all of his belongings. And that's why he's in charge. Like, he's like taking care of all of his people. And so when we talk about poor and pitiful, what we're really talking about here is like not having your culture, not having your language, not having your, your ceremonies, your songs, your, your traditional ways of being, not understanding your history. That's really what we're talking about more, more often than not. We're talking about kind of poor and pitiful. And this is definitely something you hear a lot of times in prayers. You know, get the mock help those people that are, you know, that are poor and pitiful. There's plenty of us. So there's always something to learn, always something more to understand about our ways in life. But that's good. That's good. <clears throat> okay. Let's see how we're doing on the time here. I apologize. I've been long winded today and really going off on just off of pushed up a little bit. Okay, <clears throat> so I got some more sentences for you. <clears throat> okay. Our next our next five here. So and ready to get your, your ears open and I'll try to pronounce it as clearly as possible for you. You need some paper or pins? Everybody got paper? Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. Wow. Number goal. So number six. Nijakom Zagic. Nijakom Zagic. Nijakom Zagic. Nijakom. Zagich. Need your gom zagich. Need your gom zagich. Need your gom zagich. <clears throat> and really don't worry about if you're if you're spelling it right or whatever. I mean, as long as you understood what you wrote, <clears throat> that's kind of the number one. I mean, look at me. <laughs> My handwriting's terrible. <laughs> so make sure you write it clearly for yourself so that you can read your notes later. Um, Okay, number Noak, number seven. When need you give the mod to jug? 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 When did you give him the joke? When did you give him the joke? <clears throat> see if I have any questions too. I'm not checking my questions. No questions. Okay. When did you give him the joke? Okay. Number eight. Number eight. Here we go. Need you be wa ma ji yuk wa buk. Need you be wa ma ji yuk wa buk. Nija pi 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 wa ma ji yuk wa buk. 
Nija P Wa Maji Yuk Wabuk. Nija P Wa Maji Yuk Wabuk. Last one. Nija P Wa Maji Yuk Wabuk. Okay. <clears throat> now, number shock. Number nine. Number shock. Shock and Here we go. Wek Nija Gaja Shkayan Nago. Wek Nija Gaja Shkayan Nago. Wek Nija Gaja Shkayan Nago. Now, if you don't know what it means, this would be a good time to just try to write what you hear. That way you're kind of checking if you're hearing it right. Wek Nija Gaja Shkayan Nago. Wek Nija Ga. Jitchkayan Nago. Wek Nija Ga Jitchkayan Nago. Wek Nija Ga Jitchkayan Nago. Okay. Number Mdatso. Mdatso. Number 10. Gadot Mesle. Gadot Mesle. Gadot Mesle. Gadot Mesne, 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 Gadot Mesne. Okay. So we may have time to do sentences for each of these, but this one's we may have to, we may not have time to do since reach up. Oh, for those of you guys that are online, in case you didn't know, we are doing winter storytelling this evening at six o'clock, six to seven thirty. Um, there's food, but since you're online, unless you're ready to pop on a plane and fly down here, we can't virtually send you anything yet. <laughs> and if we send it in the mail, it definitely wouldn't taste good by the time I got there. So. But, <laughs> yeah, but thinking of you nonetheless we'll keep you in our prayers when we, we do the prayer and think of you in that way as well uh -huh. uh, okay so what was number six what did you say what was it how is it outside there how's the weather yeah yeah you golden savage savage and there's a few ways to talk about the weather. You can do it this way. You can say, how is it today outside? Nija Gom Zagic. You can say, Nija Ejewebo Kazagic. What's happening outside? Um, I will say that there, there was one that uh, that Jim had in one of his books, a different other way to say weather. And the reason there's different ways to say it is because there's not really a word for weather. That a lot of the category type words in bottom of me, there's not like a categorize. Like we didn't feel the need to have to put everything in like a little clean category, like weather shapes, this, you know. So there's not a definitive weather word. Um, that's, so what this one literally says is how today outside. How is it today outside? How is it today outside? Nisha Gong Zagic. But one of the other ones that Jim used once was he said Nisha Gij get gong. And I did that with him one day. And that's when I realized how sometimes words can mean multiple things. And I said, I said, need your geese get going. And he said to me, oh, pop the geese get. And I was like, oh, crap. Because what that word literally means is it means how is today, uh, how is the day today, or what is the day today? Because I use need you. It could be how or what. So what is the day today, or how is the day today? what it literally means. And so when I used it inside, he was thought I was asking like what the date was. I said it's Wednesday. And I was like, well, okay. That was I didn't think about that. <laughs> but I was like, okay. Huh. And so that's one reason I always I've always used some variation of this for Zagich involved because Zagich is outside. And you're not gonna be like, oh, what is the day outside? You know, like that. But that's just an example of sometimes words can have multiple meanings, especially depending on the situation that you're actually in. Um, and where I was sitting, it probably would make more sense for me to have asked him like what the date was, because we were inside the building. Like, who cares what the weather is? You know? But I was just trying to try some stuff out. And like, oh, hey, this is, what is the weather? And he's like, it's Wednesday. And I'm like, 
Sorry. <laughs> I was like, yeah. So anyway, Nija Gomzaga. Chow is today outside. Nija Gomzaga. So what's some answers we could do for this one? We need to say. 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 Those of you online may not understand that, but today it's 78 degrees. We're going to be telling winter stories. So. Um, that is the problem sometimes with Oklahoma is that you don't really know what you're getting. Uh, you could have an ice storm, and we had an ice storm last week, or you can have 78 degree weather, like a week later or two days later or something. So, um, and that is something that, uh, like I said, it's something we have to think about too. But, you know, when you tell these winter stories, it's best to tell them when there's snow on the ground, but we understand that they're. A lot of days there are no snow on the ground, and we could plan around it. We never hit the day there was snow, and then we just have to be like, hey, there's snow today, and everybody runs down and melts. So, because of that, we still adhere to telling these traditional stories in the winter time, uh, even though there may not as well be snow on the ground, though there could be tomorrow. <laughs> but uh, and we still adhere to that, and you know, it's something that I was told uh, uh, by one elder that a lot of times they didn't even. They didn't, weren't, they didn't even adhere to that maybe quite as strongly and when he was a younger. He remembers them telling some of these stories outside of the wintertime. They would just simply say a prayer and ask the creator, and I, you know, Mama goes on you know, and watch over us. And basically asking those those spirits and those things that are, are mentioned in some of these stories just kind of you know, have pity on us and understand that we're just trying to kind of share our ways. But regardless, or irregardless, I think irregardless, this is a word my wife's always telling me, but irregardless, we try to tell them in the winter time if possible. But there are a ton of these stories that are, are fine to tell outside of the winter time. There's lots of ones that don't involve like we scare, not involve you, the trickster. You know, they can be told now uh, any time of the year. And I saw a question pop up. Let me see for like for once I saw it. <clears throat> I'm so terrible about ask answering questions. <clears throat> well it's 40 here in Wisconsin today. <laughs> Much warmer than last week. 18 ice storm for us. Yeah, I think somebody told me that uh, Topeka is even hotter. They said that they set a record either today or yesterday. It was like 81. I think it was a 121 year old record for heat. So, wow. Oh, so I never finished writing this though. Gajat Dam Yet. Hot. What else? What do you think? Maybe, maybe, uh, Wasayam Yet. Right? Okay. Yeah, I'll say um yet. <clears throat> Bright or sunny kind of like. And there's several ways you can talk about being sunny. Uh, I want to say um yet. You can say paste, paste um yet. You can say uh, uh, we could also just say it's a nice day. I know these can it's a nice day. Sunny. That's right. I do have a question. I put it in the chat. Okay. What is the one? Oh, that's just that's just uh sometimes you'll see it people just say windsy when they're talking about foggy, but sometimes that's used more like with a name. And then other times people also put a one on it. So I guess whenever I do it in parentheses, it's kind of like optional, like people do it different ways sometimes. Uh, and technically though, I mean uh, yeah, even even Gajate and Get, if you really wanted to, you could just say Gajate and it's still correct. Um, <clears throat> in fact, I think if I recall, I think in the daycare we've been, we've been doing it more recently, it's just teaching them Gajate. Mainly because Gajate and Get sounds a little bit like, you know, damn, get. You know, like people get bit nauseated about silly things. So we try to keep it the minimal the incidents that people get themselves with us about. I'll give you an example. I, we were teaching the word for deer down there one time. and there's a couple ways you can say deer in Potawatomi. You can say uh, you can say yabe, which is a buck. You could say nijan, which is a doe. You can say wawash keshi, which is kind of describing that deer bounding away. The other word that we use uh, is uh, is suxi, suxi. And I had a parent come up to one of the teachers and was like, "Who's this? Who's this, Mr. Neely?" And they're like, well, "That's our language guy." Well, why was he telling my daughter that she's sexy? And I was like. 
<laughs> the teacher thankfully had been paying attention. Like, yeah, that sucks to get the deer. They're like, oh, okay. So, you know, I just decided we're just going to use, we're just going to work on Yahweh with them for now. They can learn sucksy when they get over there. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Randy, he can, he can give that one to the little kids. Because they're, they're both relative terms, they're both useful terms. They're both you know, Yahweh, sucksy, Nijan. You know, we have Gedgene is a, is a fawn. We have very descriptive words for these different animals, you know. So, Wawashkeshi. Wawashkeshi is a pretty word, though. Wawashkeshi is talking about the way that that deer kind of bounds away and it kind of flicks its tail up at you. That's about the only type of deer I usually see if I go hunting, as it flips its tail up and goes away from me. It's kind of like waving you goodbye. See you later. <laughs> I'm not very good hunter, I suppose. <laughs> so, Nijina, Nija Gomzagic. <clears throat> okay. That next one, number seven, Wenija Gita Montajuk. What is that? Who are those people? Who are those people? <laughs> so, Wenija Gita, there's our demonstrative, the Montajuk. Who are those people? Wenija Gita Montajuk. Wenija Gita Montajuk. Who are those people? Meek Bamadzajak. Meek Bamadzajak. Is that a stranger? Strangers. They're strangers. Meek is strange. So strange people. Strange people are strangers. Meek Bamadzajak. Bodewadmik. Bodewadmik. And I, will, I was going to tell you a little bit about, or you can say Bodewadmik. Now I'll tell you a little story about why people will do both of these today. So about 10 years ago, <laughs> it's about 10 years, my about that. You know, everywhere I went, people only said, you know, body 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 body. well, a couple of different speakers, uh, Jim Thunder and Billy Daniels were talking and they were, and they were like, man, you know, I wonder if our original word for ourselves was actually more like board way lot me. And the argument that they made for it was really pretty solid. Um, so his board way <clears throat> means, anybody know what that means? To build a fire. The verb to build a fire. And then wad, if you think about wad, think about what. On that conjunctive. They, that's the they on that conjunctive, Majin. So they build a fire, and then that me or me is used sometimes for like a people that do it. So like the people that build a fire. Okay. It's a pretty solid explanation. But but I'd always learned it as bode wad me too. And so I'm like, yeah. So now I'm just like, sometimes I'll say Bode Wai Wadmi, sometimes I'll say Bode Wadmi. Sometimes, honestly, I really like to just say Mishnabe. Mishnabe. But today, you know, because there's lots of different Anishinaabe type people, sometimes people will introduce themselves as Mishnabe, and then they'll say, you know, Bode Wadmi Dao, or Bode Wai Wadmi Dao, and I'm part of Wadmi. Because today, <clears throat> the sometimes will be used in reference to just Indians in general or indigenous in general, Mishnabe. Um, but it's our original name for ourselves. So other people would have said, hey, these are the Padamamis. This was our name that, that we used to call ourselves, Anishinaabe. And for uh, Ojibwa people, they'll say Anishinaabe. So add a little extra to it, Anishinaabe. But especially when around a lot of different Anishinaabe people, a lot of times we'll say, what do want me to or what do they want me to So. I know people wonder that sometimes. I don't go into a lot of explanation on that sometimes, but you will see people who will say "bold way wide me." Some people say "bold way wide me." He, I just kind of depends how I feel that day. "Bold way wide me," "bold way wide me." They're both good. They're both solid to me. So, when to go with you? When to go with you? 
French. French. Yeah, yeah, French. They're French. They're the French delegation or something. Wim to Goji. Now, this word has a literal meaning, Wim to Goji. Um, I've heard it said a couple different literal meanings for it, but the one that makes the most sense to me is they're like the cross stick people, the ones that were carrying those, those crosses. When we first met the French, we would often meet the Jesuit priests at the same time. They would carry those, those, those crosses. When the other one I heard was that they were the ones that like to climb up the trees and like look down, <laughs> like our, our, our ladies, I guess, like, like peeping Tom. I don't know which one it is, but I don't know. You can take it either way, but women to go because the word uh, to go see means to climb the trees. And that's what people think of. Climb, climb the tree, but women took over to you. But that took is kind of talking about that that stick, that 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 cross is what it's talking about. It's that wooden thing that they were carrying. Women took over you. <clears throat> okay. I apologize for rambling again. And... I enjoyed it. <laughs> Hopefully somebody did. <laughs> it's uh, it's interesting stuff, but it's uh like I said, sometimes I Stuff is. Okay, I think we're going to do, I think what we're going to do this time is I'm, we're starting to run about a little bit of time. I do want to save my voice a little bit for this evening. I don't want to be uh, up there and like, blah, 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 I can't talk, <clears throat> trying to tell stories. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go through those uh, last three sentences and we'll just write what they are and so you guys can see what they were. So number eight, number what was that? Nijapiwa Maji Yuk Waba. What does that mean? When will y'all leave tomorrow? Yes, they're both y'all good. Nijapi Maji Yuk Waba. So, Nijapiwa Maji Yuk Waba. When in the future leave you all tomorrow? So, when are y'all going to leave tomorrow? Nijapiwa Maji Yuk Wabak. Nijapiwa Maji Yuk Wabak. When are you all, Yunus, going to leave tomorrow? Number nine, does anybody know that one? Write that down. Where Nija Kiwa Maji Yuk Wabak. What did Zhitschke is the verb to do something? The yin is you. So what did you do yesterday? <clears throat> Finally, did I catch this one? Don't miss me. Don't miss me. Anybody know what that one is? Are you busy? Yeah, are you busy? There you go. Are you busy? You're the man there, you really do. Okay. Are you busy? You don't miss snack? This is a good one to know. I mean, if you're, if you're popping on some, hey, you don't, you don't miss snack. You don't miss snack. Are you busy? You don't miss snack. You don't miss snack. Very good, very good. Okay, <clears throat> like I said, I think on that note, I think that's probably good for today. I actually wrote like 20 sentences like over a while, <laughs> but hey, they're, they're always good there for another day. But I do think that that kind of activity, I hope that you agree, I think that kind of activity is very useful <clears throat> because there's one thing about being able to read what you see on the board, even be able to write something, you know, even on the computer, but it's a little bit different skill when it comes to actually hearing it, hearing that with those words. And then, like right now, we're just working on hearing them and then coming up with an answer later. Perhaps as we go down the road, we could take these same questions and then actually ask the question that you guys can reply to. So, or we could do an activity where maybe I give that to you ahead of time, maybe some little bit of vocabulary, so you kind of know what it's going to be about. And then, like maybe I could say, hey, we're going to talk about the weather tomorrow. And I give you a bunch of like weather phrases and stuff. You can kind of maybe look at them, review them, and then come in and be like, okay. Yeah. So. One of my favorite ones is when you gave us song titles to translate. 
that was, I should do that one again. That was a, that was a fun one. <clears throat> a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, and uh, I actually picked that up from Hannibal. They did it several years ago. That was the whole version deal. It was just all kinds of modern and some of them older, older songs. There was like some Elvis. There was some Beatles. Lady Gaga. There was some Beatles. <laughs> there was just a little bit of everything. Uh, that was a fun activity. So, uh -huh. Okay. Il, il na. So hopefully you guys will join us later for some winter storytelling. Those of you that are here local, there's meat pies and food and drinks, uh, some good times. Those of you that are far away, there's hopefully some good stories that you'll enjoy. And uh, il, il na. Okay. Wow, I'm on Man, I get you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am.